The subprime mortgage meltdown. Who is to blame? Is it uneducated investors or is it predatory lenders? We need now to debate Barbara Ehrenreich, columnist and author of Bait and Switch, and Carrie Lucas. She is the vice president for policy and economics at the Independent Women's Forum. Forum. Barbara, who's to blame for the subprime crisis? Well, I think what's to blame, and the big thing that's to blame is that we have a huge percentage of Americans who don't make enough money to buy a house by simply saving money. Wages are low. 25% of Americans are in the working poor. So when companies, lenders, began just in the last decade to really move in on them big time, and there was a Business Week cover story on this trend in May, uh, yeah, they were eager to accept the easy credit. But somebody, the lenders, weren't thinking that in a, you know in the, these people are not people who in the end could afford it, who could not afford the interest because of their low wages. Carrie, Barbara makes it seem like there's a, a bit of a, a predatory lending practices that are going on, or even maybe something more nefarious. What's your take on the whole subprime issue? Well, I think we need to be really careful when we use the word blame, because what really went on here is there was some uh, investors who made risky decisions, offered loans that were um, were to people who couldn't necessarily afford to pay those loans, and the individuals who accepted those mortgages also weren't, weren't thinking properly on, on how much this was going to cost and just what this was going to to entail. And what we have right now is the market at work, and the market is correcting this problem in its own way, which is painful for those who are losing their homes, just as it's painful for those companies who are seeing their stock values decline. But it is a process. It's a correction. We shouldn't get uh, to overblow it. It is, um, it is something that's a natural process, and we need to let it work itself out. Carrie, do you think the financial literacy of this country is particularly high? For example, the state of Illinois just passed a law requiring people who wanted to get a mortgage to spend one hour with a mortgage counselor under the theory that people should understand exactly what they're signing and getting into. Apparently, a lot of people didn't. What do we need to do to raise the financial literacy of the United States? Gosh, that's a discussion in its own right. I think we need to start with our public education system, which is um, you're terrible when it comes to, method, uh, to issues such as ec um, the economics and financial literacy. I think that starts with school choice moving beyond what the teachers union wants and putting power in the hands of parents but um, but I do think that's that's a real problem and that is one of the the causes of what we see here today Barbara I have been here 17 years at CNBC and I've been constantly dismayed uh, by the fact that many people spend more time researching what kind of refrigerator they want than what kind of retirement they want I, I want to follow up with the same question with you what do we need to do what needs to be done to get people better educated about the complicated financial world we live in well let me say I'm one of the first people who would need that financial education. I just got a new mor I got a mortgage. I didn't read any of the fine print. I mean, there's a certain level of trust you have when you've been in this system for a long time. You sort of figure you like your mortgage agent, you know, there's broker, there's not going to be a problem. Now, I don't think that's an excuse though. But you know, what what part of what went on leading to the subprime uh, crisis and the defaults, there was outright fraud. Yeah. You know, and that you're not going to get around that with any kind of education. Barbara, you had a, you had That's a, regulation. You had That's a very interesting uh, article out, and I followed your career for many years. But your recent article is very interesting. You call it "Smashing Capitalism." You call a lot of these loans trick mortgages, and basically advocate that people simply stop paying them as a militant no, statement that, that they were being ripped no, off. I Are didn't. you actually advocating you I don't that people think you, stop paying no, their mortgages? No, you, you didn't get the irony. You didn't get oh, the sarcasm. <laughs> I was saying, in a Humorous way, I am. <laughs> yeah. You, this, in a way, this is like. Uh, you know, the, the problem of poverty came and smashed us in the face in the last couple of weeks. Because it's easy to put that out of your mind, isn't it? It's easy to forget that there are people who are actually not going to be able to make that payment, who are actually not going to be able to shop even at Walmart. And that's another thing that aggravated the stock market in the last week, in the last week or so. Because they don't earn enough. You know, this is something we all have to wake up to. Carrie, uh, let me just turn to you here. Sorry. Should the federal government, you just heard John Edwards talking about perhaps one million people who may not be able to pay their mortgage. I don't know if that statistic is accurate, and I don't know what statistics are accurate. I don't think anyone knows. But let's assume a substantial number. Should the government step in with some kind of forbearance, assistance at all to those people who may not be able to, to pay their mortgage? A absolutely not. We have a lot of programs already in place that are to help those in, in need. But to come in and specifically try to address this problem which is a lending problem and a problem of taking on more debt than you can bear 
there. It really would be sending the wrong message to individuals that there aren't going to be consequences to taking on debt and that you don't need to read the, the fine print. We all have to take responsibility for the contracts we enter enter into. And I think before you, know, I think it's important when we talk about the issue of poverty, uh, not to this idea of smashing capitalism as if that's going to help the poor is really wrong-headed. The American economic system is the best engine of, of progress and economic growth and well-being for, for all people, including those on the lower end of the economic scale, who don't tend to stay there. People, too, and to, and to, tend to move up Barbara, in terms of income. Oh, Barbara, well. last word with you. No, We've only got 10 seconds. No, okay. Didn't say to smash capitalism. I said that's what was happening. It was happening because we have this huge number of people who can't pay this much money. And, yes, I do think they need help. If you don't help them now, then we are going to have to address the fact that we have very little by way of a safety net in this country. You want more homeless people on the streets? That's the way we're heading with this crisis. Do you think you're actually going to see a lot of people walking around homeless in the streets at this point? Well, if, we're no, if we can't help them, yeah. Carrie? And no, I think I, there's assistance in, in place and we just need to let the process work. All right, thanks very much, everybody. Very interesting debate. We're not going to solve it tonight, but it's certainly important. Very right, thanks to Barbara Wright and Carrie Lucas. But don't forget, tonight we're going to.